This is the Triumph Tiger 850 Sport Adventure Motorcycle. And in this video, I'm going to tell you something you absolutely won't believe, so watch it through to the end. Um, I've given this bike a full and thorough test ride before we film, as we always do, so we don't always film all of the roads that we ride, so we've, we've ridden it on all different types of road, and now I can tell you exactly what this motorcycle is like. Triumph Market, the Tiger Sport 850, as a road-focused adventure bike. But let me tell you, it still is a capable trail bike. And as you can see from the clips, uh, it's more than uh, capable of going down some farm tracks and what have you. Uh, so if you're out somewhere and you find yourself in uh, a place like this, it's a perfectly capable motorcycle of going pretty much anywhere. The Tiger produces 85 PS peak power at 8,500 RPM and 82 Newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM. But the important thing is that it doesn't drop below 70 Newton meters of torque right from 3,000 to 8,500 RPM. So there's torque there all the time. And let's face it, most of the time you're riding with the torque, not the power. Um, so people get hooked up on sort of peak power figures, but most of the time they're way up in the rev range. And let's face it, you're not always revving the nuts off of your bike. Some people do, but uh, most people don't. So actually you're riding with the torque. So the torque figures and where that torque comes in and how linear it is, is much more important. And this has got it uh, all the way through. Now, if you're in the EU and the UK, um, you can get this on an A2 license. Your dealer will uh, slightly restrict the power to 47 brake horsepower, which is the legal limit on an A2 license. If you're not from the UK, you won't have that problem, or the EU, um, but we have nanny state here, so we have to sort of comply by these ridiculous rules and regulations that we keep saying. Um, but saying that, on an A2 restriction, this bike still has 78 Newton meters of torque, which peaks at 3,750, and you've got bucket loads of it lower down as well. Uh, so this would be a wonderful bike to ride on an A2 license, and you won't really feel that drop in power because as I said before it's the torque you feel uh, and this would be a great bike on an A2 license. You've got six gears on this and I must say the gear change is buttery smooth, the clutch is light, it's absolutely spot on, it really is one of the best gear changes and clutch um, actions I've ever felt on a motorcycle so top marks there for Triumph and that makes riding for long distances and uh, long periods of time effortless. Now, another good thing about this bike, the seat height is adjustable from 810 millimeters to 830 millimeters. Um, so you can vary the height and you just put the key in the back here to do that and take the rear seat out. So uh, you've got a pillion seat as well, obviously in the pegs, which is great. Uh, and you just slide it out. Um, the front can uh, be in the top or the bottom um, bracket or whatever you want to call it. And this bit at the back here just comes out and you pull it over to put it on the high setting and put it back this way for the low setting. I had it on the high setting and uh, I must say it did slip. So uh, it didn't seem to fit because the seat's quite flexible. When it's in the, in the sort of bracket at the front, it doesn't stay in there when you put a bit of weight on it. Uh, perhaps I've been eating too many burgers. The wheelbase is 1,556 millimeters. The rake is 24.6 degrees and the trail is 133.3 millimeters. And all those figures combined give you 
secure handling, stability and good turning. Uh, the turning circle isn't huge, but um, if you're doing a three-point turn, as you'll see in the video, sort of changing direction on a narrow lane, you can do it fairly easily. And the bike's not so heavy, I'll give you the weight in a second, that you can't sort of shunt it up and down and get on in a different direction without any problems. Tiger 850 weighs 192 kilograms, which isn't particularly heavy. It's not particularly light either. Um, but when you're riding, it feels nice and light and flickable and easy to maneuver. The only time you feel the weight, and that's the same with any bike, uh, near, near or above 200 kilos, is when you're trying to push it backwards, especially if it's up a slope or if there's something under the tire, uh, then it's a bit of a shunt, but that's the same with anything. Uh, but maneuvering, turning around in the road, etc., it's it's light enough to be able to um, not have any issues. Got a big fuel tank on this, 20 litres, uh, and it does about 55.4 miles per gallon, uh, which is 5.21 litres per 100 kilometres. Um, so that's pretty good. So you've got a good range with a tank like this. The service intervals are every 6,000 miles or once a year, which ever comes first. Now, just here at the front, you've got a 12 volt power socket, which is very handy. Uh, you've got the uh, digital display and um, it's very easy to read the speed and see the different things like how many miles per gallon you're doing and what have you. It's got an unusual sort of rev uh, counter display which I found a little hard to read at a glance so um, for me I'd prefer an analog dial but I'm still a dinosaur and I still like analog dials um, but you computerized people would be used to looking at screens and you'll love it. You've got two modes on this road and rain that's all you need and you don't have to fiddle about with menus and sub menus and changing the settings for the this and the that, which is just ridiculous. Uh, so it's nice and simple. Rain gives you a bit more traction control. Uh, it kicks in earlier, etc., and it sort of uh, lessens the throttle response a little bit. So you're not going to sort of spin up the back wheel and lose control of the bike, which is great. So uh, when the roads are slippery, I would recommend using that. Otherwise, in road mode, it's uh, more responsive and it's a very nice ride in either mode. The price is £9,400 in the UK. Check on your local website for Triumph prices in your country. Um, and that is in the red or the blue, and both colours have the grey here and elsewhere. Uh, so it's just the bits you see in blue would be red if you chose that colour. Um, styling wise, it's very similar to most adventure bikes. You've got the sort of frame here. The engine is a structural member uh, and you've got this sort of beaky front here. Um, I think the time has come personally for a restyle of adventure bikes. Uh, that might be my personal taste. I love the look of the motocross and dirt bikes from the early 1980s. If we could sort of rewind, make them a bit more retro looking, um, no one really does it. I mean, you've got the Bonneville scramblers and what have you. Um, they're better looking in my opinion. Um, but uh, let's take an adventure bike and restyle it because they all kind of look the same, uh, whichever manufacturer you choose. So from that point of view, personally, I would like to see a restyle. I know these are so popular though, so you'll probably have a difference of opinion and you'll tell me that I'm completely crazy for saying that, um, but tell us, we'd like to know. Just quickly running through, you've got double disc brakes and the stopping power is very good, they're Brembo's. Uh, you've got an adjustable screen up and down, different uh, levels uh, that you can click into. Very effective actually, works very well. Radiators there, upside down forks. Um, the exhaust's three into one, uh, three cylinder engine. Um, the seat is actually very comfortable. There's enough room on it to move backwards and forwards. So although it's scooped, you do have enough movement on the bike. You've got the passenger foot pegs, obviously if you take a pillion, they unbolt if you don't want to take anybody. Um, the gear lever and the brake lever are nicely positioned. So with my big size 11 feet, no problems on that. The handlebars are wide enough, 
not too wide, but not narrow, which is good. So you've got good control of the bike. Uh, the levers are just for in and outness, so you can get the right reach for your uh, fingers. If you were, <clears throat> let me sit on the bike. If you were my height, six foot two, um, see that seat it just clicks down. Um, the riding position is as you see it. It feels quite roomy. As I said, my legs are bent a little bit more than 90 degrees. If you were five foot four, you might find it a little tall. Um, if you're sort of five foot six and above, you'd be fine. If you're above six foot two, it'd still be all right. Um, but like anything or any other bike, it's always gonna be a compromise. The side stand, when it goes down, it works perfectly well. When it's up, it sticks out a little bit. Um, it doesn't get in the way, but you can see it there uh, sticking out a little bit, which is unusual for Triumph because normally the side stands hide away when they're up. Now, here's the interesting bit. If you've followed our channel for a while, you'll know that I've never been a great fan of adventure bikes. Um, and I, I think the reason is I've never quite understood them. And because I came from a motocross background, um, if I see something that looks off-roady, I think, well, it needs to be uh, like a motocross bike. Um, and I couldn't quite see the point. But the other day, Darcy and I, well, a month or so ago, we were touring Wales on our Harleys. And we were stopped at this farm and we were getting licked by some cows. Um, watch the video. Um, and some adventure bikes rode past. And we waved at them, watched them. They had sort of uh, luggage on them. You can get luggage for this back on the back and on the sides. Uh, so if you're touring, it's wonderful to try to do so many accessories. And suddenly the penny dropped. I thought, oh, get it now. It's not about being a motocross bike. Uh, adventure bikes are great for um, getting on a journey on the motorway, the freeway, the dual carriageway is going a long distance. It travels very nicely on the dual carriageway and the motorway. But when you get somewhere like this and you're exploring the lanes or the towns, the little quaint places you can go, um, they're wonderful. And that's the point of it. And I think I've been missing the point, thinking it's, it's got to be a perfect off-road bike. It's, it's capable off-road. It can do trail riding green lanes with no problems whatsoever. And obviously there are other Tigers that are more off-road focused than this one. Um, but that is the point of it. It gets you around. So if you're touring, you can take your luggage, you can unbolt them and then go around uh, the local area where you've uh, gone to on your holiday or whatever, go camping and uh, just enjoy the countryside and all the interesting places. So that's the point of the adventure bike. I get it now. Um, and believe it or not, I think this is a wonderful motorcycle. Uh, so my opinion about adventure bikes has changed with this bike. Perhaps it's because I've never ridden a Triumph adventure bike before. Um, I'm extremely impressed. So I now can say, oh, I like adventure bikes and not uh, be lying. And it is a great adventure bike. So uh, <sighs> that's a bit of a surprise to myself. The suspension is very good indeed, actually. Um, I've taken it over some rough roads and it soaks up uh, the smaller bumps completely and you wouldn't notice them. The bigger bumps, obviously you feel it on any bike uh, and it copes with them very well as well. So uh, full marks for the suspension. You've got a mono shock single spring at the rear. And as I said, the upside down forks at the front work perfectly well. And considering this is a road focused adventure bike, um, the suspension is very good on the trails as well. It would be a really good commuter motorcycle. So um, especially with the luggage, you can take whatever you like on it. You've got this sort of rail at the back, which is nice. You've got something to get hold of. So the passenger can hold that and uh, it's kind of flat at the back so you can strap things to it. It would be even better if there were some little hooks or eyelets so you can uh, strap your bungees to it a bit better. Um, so that would improve that end of it. But other than that, um, it's a very nice design. What I can say about this Triumph Tiger 850 Sport uh, is that it could be 
the most versatile motorbike out there because it's very good on the motorways, on the dual carriageways, it's very good in the town, it's very good in the countryside, in the country lanes, it can do trail riding, it can do everything. Uh, so it's an extremely versatile motorbike, so if you want one motorbike that does it all, this does it all. The rain is just starting to roll in again, and the dog is coming into shot. Hello, goodbye. Um, to summarise, this bike is superb. If you like adventure bikes, it's really very good indeed. It's not too powerful, which is great. Sometimes um, people go for much more power than they need. This has got more than enough, tons of torque, handles well, brakes well, corners well, accelerates well, uh, does everything well. So Triumph Tiger 850 Sport, what more can I say?